Hello, how are you? Welcome to CUO, where we correct misrepresentation of Nigeria, Nigerians and Africa and Africans. I've, off, I've traveled to the United States quite often and I really admire that country. Sorry, I'm doing another one. Sorry, I'm doing uh, Africa Beyond Eight. Sorry, I will start again. Can I? Hello, how are you? Welcome to CUO, where we correct mixed representation of Nigeria, Nigerians and Africa. Today we're going to be looking at us Africans daring to believe that we can exist without aid. For years now, close to for almost 50 years, if more, there have been tons of research saying that aid has not been able to get Africa out of its crisis. Most times I don't even believe that we have those crises. I think that the whole representation of Africa's needing aid has become an economy that serves some people. So we're continuously representing ourselves as needing aid as beggars because we think we get something from it. We don't get anything from it. You cannot present yourself constantly as needing to be assisted from external resources and expect that people will have faith in you and invest in you. Africa's strive to be an economic powerhouse or to be respected globally which is based on its economic potentials is contradicted by our continuous representation of ourselves as needing aid. We make plans based on external assistance. It has not worked. It will never work. It's a waste of time. It contradicts our aspiration to build ourselves. We'll be exploring an Africa without aid. Let's look at it. What will it mean for us to dare and be bold enough to say we don't need aid because we really don't need it? Once upon a time, the lovely leaders of rich countries generously gave billions of dollars to poor people living in Africa. When people are dying, we don't believe in finding excuses. We believe in trying to do something about it. The poor people in Africa receive $30 billion each year from the kind governments of rich countries, and they too became rich and happy. The aid they received meant the African people could see doctors when their children were sick, could drink clean water, and could send their children to school. The leaders of the rich countries felt really pleased about how generous they are. All those countries that keep their aid promises should be proud of what they've done. Everyone was rich and prosperous and lived happily ever after. There's another story to tell. Not one about how much we give Africa, but about how much we take. While Africa does receive under $30 billion in aid each year, $192 billion leaves the continent. Much of this goes back to rich countries. Out. $46.3 billion in multinational company profits. Out. $21 billion in debt repayments. Out, $35.3 billion in illicit financial flows. 6% of that through corporate tax evasion. Out, $6 billion through skilled workers leaving Africa. Out, $17 billion in illegal logging. Out, $1.3 billion in illegal fishing. Out, $36.6 billion as a result of climate change that Africa didn't cause. Children in Africa are 16 times more likely to die before the age of five than children in rich countries. In Sierra Leone, life expectancy for a child born today is 45. Africa has a shortage of 1.8 million skilled health workers. This is predicted to rise to 4.3 million in the next 20 years. $30 billion a year in aid to Africa. $192 billion out of Africa. Our political leaders are telling us only half the story about our financial relationship with Africa. Let's rewrite the story. Once upon a time, people in poor and rich countries got fed up of hearing how generous world leaders are to Africa. And they took action. To end tax havens. To tackle the looming debt crisis. To end the plundering of African resources by multinational companies. To tackle climate change. Make our leaders get their story straight. Take action today. Spending this time with me, let's go back to our countries. Let's look around and try to note some of the systems in place. Do we really need them? Can we really use our resources for ourselves 
have we been too relaxed in allowing some form of dependency done by our government anyway? Let's keep this conversation going. Comment and don't forget to click, preferably like and subscribe. Thank you.